three, two. Welcome back to Unveiling the Truth. We're your hosts, Nefer. And I'm Nelly, and today we're going to be talking about the don'ts in dating. Ooh, so without further ado, let's go unveil the truth. Okay, so before we get started, just like we start off everything that is good and holy, I'm going to lead us off in a prayer, um, the Hail Mary, because we're talking about modesty and purity and everything like that, who better to call upon than our Mother Mary, who is the most modest and beautiful woman in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictis fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Nelly. You're welcome. So, just like we said, we're going to be talking about the don'ts in dating. So we think this is good to get out for, like, young teenage people, and even adults who are, like, in a relationship, because there's a lot of things, especially in society, that happen in relationships that aren't actually kosher. And, like, even if you're, like, a good Catholic, there are some things that you don't know that are actually sinful, and even, like, moral, mortally sinful, um, because it's just, like, normal in today's society. So these are the don'ts in dating that we're going to go over that um, you don't do in a relationship. I mean, don'ts. The don'ts in dating. Yeah, the don'ts in <laughs> <The don'ts> dating. <laughs> dating. So go ahead and read down. off the first one. All right. So the first one is we have, is we have, the first one we have dressing immodestly is the don'ts. Yeah, dressing so immodestly. Should. The do is dress modestly. Yeah. But the don't is dressing is immodestly. So there is this kind of, I guess, um, idea where like, you know, a girl might say, like, oh, you know, I'm going to dress all hot or whatever or all sexy. Cute for, for my boyfriend. For Lingerie. My boyfriend. And, yeah, like, mini skirts and whatever. Um, or even guys themselves might want to yeah. show off a lot of skin. Um, because, you know, they're trying to impress each other. Although, think about it. Why are they trying to impress yeah, each other exactly. with immodest dress? Well, What's yeah. that going to lead to? Yeah, and not only are they trying to impress each other, but they're also just, like, they think, oh, well, I love him so much and we're so intimate with each other and we're basically going to get married, so I think it's okay if I show my skin. It's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, you're just dating. You're not married. And right now you could think you love him, but in actuality you may not love him. Yeah. And you're giving your, your boyfriend husband privileges. That's what this boil does, too. Don't give your boyfriend husband privileges. Pretty much, yeah. No. So, nice so the one. next one, this kind of ties into the other one. Oh, and, you know, dressing modestly also protects the dignity of each other. Right. Because, you know, you still want to look out for each other. And if you really care for their soul, this is also about caring for your boyfriend or your girlfriend's soul. Because mm-hmm. you want to protect their dignity and their purity and you want to make sure their soul is clean for God. So you need to be the one, whether you're a guy or girl, you need to be the one to set the limit and be like, I don't want to see that on you. I was like, excuse me, protect <laughs> my eyes. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. <laughs> Why did I say hear no evil and cover my eyes? <laughs> I can now hear it through my eyeballs. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you loud and clear. <laughs> okay. So the next one, no kissing passionately, no passionately kissing. Um, so a lot of people debate this. So we suggest even like saving your, your kiss for marriage yeah. because the kiss is such a beautiful and important thing. Um, that is super intimate and showing your connection love so we even suggest saving your kiss for marriage you know and and saving it for the special person because it is really important but especially and but the church doesn't say that kissing is wrong it is not a sin to kiss however passionately kissing is what Mm -hmm. is actually a mortal sin because that is a slippery slope into the dirty you know what I mean like if it has to be you have to really treat each other like almost like siblings like that's what the church asks is to treat each other like siblings so no passionate kissing because at least a passionate touching and that means to like other stuff that is not good to treat each other like siblings they'd probably be punching my boyfriend all the time (laughs) (laughs) hey hey i mean i punch a lot of my friends but yeah so that's what so no passionate a lot of people think that just the action of intercourse is what's a sin but in actuality kissing passionately touching passionately Mm -hmm. talking passionately like even being very verbal with each other and stuff like that is Mm -hmm. very wrong too and that's even mortally wrong to passionately kiss like i'll hear my like this happens with my catholic friends too because they don't know and they'll be talking about how like they were like kissing this one dude and like how good it was and stuff like that i'm like and i just want to say you know that's a mortal sin like you can't passionately kiss people like that because that's giving them too much you're allowing them too much and you're not protecting each other's purity and dignity and you're giving them husband privileges you know what i mean right yeah yeah. It's like you really want to respect yourself in that person. And even then, right there, it's just kind of like putting yourself in the near occasion of sin. Mm-hmm. Because you may you may not like go past past kissing, but you may. Yeah, you might. Kissing, yeah. You well, know? it shows that you open that up. So first you allow the kissing, then you allow the passionate kissing, then you allow the passionate touching, and yeah. then so on. Yeah, and then you allow other stuff to happen. Other stuff to happen. Yeah. <laughs> just keep it PG. 
<laughs> so this next one that a lot of people don't know, just like the passionate kissing, and that is you can't spend the night with each other. So even like leaving your house late at night and going in early in the morning, that's kind of bordering on it because you want to, it's like the sin of scandal. Like if, if pe somebody can look at you and assume that that's what's happening, then you shouldn't be doing it. You know what yeah. I mean? So you can't spend the night with each other and you can't sleep in the same bed overnight for many reasons because that's like you said putting yourself in the mm -hmm. occasion of sin mm -hmm. and that is sharing something intimate with that person that only your husband should get there's something like father mike schmidt and that father, father mike, mike schmidt <laughs> said in that one video there's something insanely intimate with sharing a bed with somebody and you're making that connection with somebody who is just your boyfriend yeah exactly and your girlfriend. like there's no covenant or promise there which if you've seen on like our sacraments videos mm -hmm. we talk about how matrimony is a covenant it's a promise right between the two spouses and God. Yeah. You know, and so there isn't that, like, you know, you might be in a serious dating relationship, but you're mm -hmm. not in, like, a covenant promise relationship yeah. yet. So, you know, you're gonna, you're putting yourself in danger of doing stuff that is not suitable or appropriate for the type of relationship you have. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, it's kind of, like Father Mike Schmidt said in that one video, it's like the sin of scandal. And, like, Jesus obviously takes the sin of scandal so seriously that he said that, like Father Mike Schmidt, like, quoted is that, um, the, if one of you were to lead my little ones to sin, it's better that a millstone be tied mm -hmm. around his neck and thrown into the river. That's how serious he was. And that's like, when you do that with each other, you're leading that person into sin and you're ruining their innocence because you might not be thinking anything of it and she not, might not be thinking anything of it, but there's something there and there's something that could turn yeah. there. Or even then someone else can be like, oh, well, they're Catholic and they're doing it. Exactly. They're you Catholic know? and so they're like, sleeping together. I guess it's not bad. You and know? like, it's like, and you can't just say no, nothing's going to happen because there's still that feeling there. You, you can't know. tell me, yeah, you can't tell me that you're lying next to bed and the person you're in love with and you're not feeling something there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so yeah. <laughs> the best way to avoid sin is to avoid the occasion of sin. Yes. Sir. So that one, a lot of people don't know. No spending the night with each other. No moving in with each other. You definitely oh. cannot move in with each other. Mm -hmm. Um. So the last one is this ties down to like what everything ties down to is that you can't have relations. So that means no intercourse. No. Well, we already mentioned like the no passionate kissing. So yeah. obviously there's only. So it's like left. basically this is like the big bulk of them all. Like all these things can lead to that. Mm -hmm. So don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So so the reason why, there are so many reasons why you don't have a relation outside of marriage because your body's a temple, you're trying to protect it for your husband. You don't want to make that connection with anyone who isn't your husband and who you aren't going to spend the rest of your life with. But also because a lot of people don't know this, but the reason why it is such a big sin to have relations outside of marriage is because God is involved in this. Mm -hmm. God blesses sexual activities if you're married because it is such a beautiful thing in his eyes because yeah. that's when you're the closest to being like god himself because you're assisting him in the procreation of yeah. men so it's conjugal unity and procreation exactly like so that's why. when you share in god's divinity the most is because you're assisting him in procreating humans mm -hmm. however you do that the wrong way a lot of people don't know that every time you have relations with each other you're you are basically renewing your marriage vows after you get married when they first spend the night to each other they're renewing their marriage vows and yeah. every time they they have relations with each other each other they're renewing their marriage vows so if you do that outside of marriage you're basically connecting with each other and renewing something that isn't there and you're kicking god out the door so yeah. you're making it something dirty and pleasurable instead of welcoming god into your relationship and welcoming him to be in the room with you when you're having relations because it's a blessed thing by him and the church or even think about it the first time it's also like a solidifying of that marriage. yeah exactly because like, if you think in biblical times, they all talk about the consummation of marriage, mm -hmm. which is basically, it's like, okay, you're you're married, but you're not, like, it's, it's like, it's official once the first night comes in, mm -hmm. you know? So think about, like, the in the book of Tobit, you have Sarah, she got married seven times, but she could never consummate her marriage with any of those guys because they always died before it was possible. Oh, wow. It wasn't until Tobias came along mm -hmm. that they prayed that the evil spirit would stop, like, bothering them that they actually got to consummate their marriage. You know, mm -hmm. and so like, yeah, they're, you know, I guess in a legal sort of contract, you're married, but the consummation of the marriage is what sort of like, all right, it's official now. Yeah. You know, so think about it. you're doing something that kind of officiates marriage mm -hmm. outside of marriage. Yeah, exactly. You're basically marrying this person. Uh, with but without the blessing of God, like you're yeah. you're, you're having that official like okay intimacy. we have an into exactly yeah. an official like we have an intimacy now that we can't achieve that in theory right you can't achieve with anyone else um, 
even though we don't have like the permission exactly you know exactly. it's like you like you're you're doing an action that you don't have permission for yet mm -hmm. but it's still an official action imagine you break up with this guy yeah you already you you're already spiritually and like and, yeah. physically and intimately bonded with that person mm -hmm. and even psychologically because hormones get involved yeah exactly and that's what i was going to say that's another big reason why you want to stay a virgin until marriage is because um think about it when you, like you said, it's it's uh, solidifying that the wedding night. So mm -hmm. you get officially married in the eyes of the church, in the eyes of Jesus, and then you solidify that by giving yourselves to each other for the rest of the lives. Well, if you've already given that to another man, then what's so important that you're giving your husband now? Yeah. Like you've already given it to someone else. So that is something that a lot of people don't know is there's a lot of psychology in this. And mm -hmm. your mind actually, and I know people who this happens to a bunch where their mind actually wanders back to the first person they did it with or somebody else that they loved and stuff like that. And it drives all that emotional and mental baggage from their memories into their marriage. They're like, I love my husband, I'm with him now, but my mind is wandering back to this other man I love because I gave my body to him. Mm -hmm. When you give your body to somebody, you are connecting with them emotionally, physically, and mentally. Yeah. So you can't just get over that. So imagine finally getting married in the eyes of the church, but already doing it with another guy, so it's not that special with your husband. Yeah. It's like, so you already consummated marriage with another guy. So you still like that other guy. And I, I actually have friends who said that they still have dreams about... Um, the people that they're with before, even though they're now happily married. They yeah. still have dreams, and, and they don't know why, because they love their husband now, but it's because they made that mental connection with that person. Mm -hmm. So it just avoids a lot of hurt on your own heart, too. And even think about, like, the way uh, Father Do Donald Calloway in this Consecration of St. Joseph book, when he describes the... And he describes, like, Mary, and he's like, well, you know, I think in one of the specific... I don't have the book with me right now, but in one of the pages, he says that um, Mary had reserved her body for mm -hmm. God, and so she was free to give her heart to St. Joseph. So she truly loved St. Joseph, even though she mm -hmm. didn't give her body to him. But if she reserved her body to God, this is why and we also say that she's a spouse of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. right? Because she reserved her body for God. It's, you know, like a holy, like, it's a holy union. Right. That's right. what it is. Well, and another thing is that the devil is very involved in relationships because... Before you get married, the devil is like, take it off, take it off, take your clothes off, take your clothes off, take your clothes off. And then you give in to that and look what you've done. And after you get married, the devil's like, keep it on, keep it on. You don't need kids. You don't want kids. You know, yeah. don't consummate that love with each other. It's just too much work, you know? So yeah. the devil really has his hand in this because this is going to sound really dumb, but like intercourse and like that sexual relation is like a huge pillar in marriage. Sometimes yeah. it's what no, keeps it marriages together. It's not just yeah. something dirty. It's something that that's God purposely like, intended to be important in the marriage. Yeah, that's why some people's like, no, I mean, if you have, you have to go ahead. <laughs> like, like if you're married, but you need that. Yeah, exactly. You know, that, that's yeah. what people say. Like, I mean, and you need and that I, intimacy. It that's sounds God made silly, it. but like I don't remember. It was a, it was a text I read. It was like an actual like church text I mm -hmm. read. I don't remember if it was an encyclical or uh, like uh, an apostolic letter. I don't remember what it was. And people say like, you know, like. Yeah, like, they should, you know, they should have relations. Because you're married, it's conjugal union. That's how, it's, you're, re yeah. you're, like, revitalizing. Yeah, them, it you really, know? Or, yeah. like, kind of like how you said, you're renewing those vows that you make. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it really does keep the marriage together because that's why God created it. He wanted us to have that intimacy. And that's why, like, like, sexual relation is one of the big pillars in marriage. Like, you need, a lot of people need that for the marriage to survive because, and that's why it's so important to do it the correct way inside the church. Because mm -hmm. if it's outside the church, it's a dirty, disgusting, distorted thing. Just like the devil takes everything good and turns it distorted. Yeah. And so the devil has his hand in that. So it's super dirty and wrong outside of marriage, but the church adores it and even says it's a necessity a inside necessity, of marriage. Yeah. yeah, inside of the marriage. Inside of the blessing of God. Mm -hmm. Because I know that, I know a, a woman in specific who said that that was what kept her marriage together because outside of like that, her husband might have been like a tyrant and been like annoying and stuff like that. But inside of that, she said he was the most caring person. And that's when she saw a side of him that nobody else saw. Mm -hmm. And that's what attracted her to him is that he was so caring and nurturing in those moments. So it's just really deep to think about. That this is just such yeah. an important thing that God wants for us and he wants us to do it the right way because he knows what it does for us. If you do it the right way, this is like very deep stuff. Yeah. But if you do it outside of it, too. it's like dumb. Yeah. That's a nice way to end. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, but like imagine giving all of that beauty to just a guy who dated you and like called you pretty and stuff like that. That's why you have and to break up with you after three months. Yeah, exactly. And broke up with like <laughs> seriously. Got, and sometimes the person will say whatever they can to get you to give this to them. But don't give in. Make yourself different. Don't be like every other person out there. Oh my gosh. Who just, thinks it's part of love. Huh? You just reminded me of something from middle school where my, um, there's this show, there's like a Mexican show called La Rosa de Guadalupe, mm -hmm. which 
triggers me on so many different levels. It started off being pretty like legit Catholic show, and then now they just have Guadalupe in the name because mm-hmm. it's like the brand that they've established. <laughs> it really has nothing to do with Catholicism, but um, well, basically the premise of this show is that oh, I think you, I think, I think Ali told you about this. Mm-hmm. Where it's the premise of the show is that you pray to Mary, like there's someone's going through a situation and they pray for the intercession of La Virgen de Guadalupe and then they get a rose and that means that like God heard the prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the end of the episode, if the prayer has been resolved, the rose just disappears. Mm-hmm. But anyways, in a lot of those shows, they deal with like a lot of stuff about having mm-hmm. relations and stuff. And I remember one of my friends was like, literally in every single soap, we were, when we were in like seventh grade, she was like, in every single soap opera or like La Rosa de Guadalupe, people will be like, oh, you like guys will be telling girls like, oh, have sex with me if that's if you truly love me, like mm-hmm. it's a sign of love. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, and girls are always so bashful. They're like, oh my gosh, but like they do it anyway. Like yeah, you know? yeah I know. Well, yeah. and then when you think about it, even if you don't want to look at it as a religious perspective. Take it from the, well, first of all, like, the mental perspective that we just said, like, there's a bunch yeah. of baggage in that when you connect with all these there's people. There's Oh, going yeah, on. I was going to say, so, um, this actually goes into something deeper because outside of, like, religiously, if you look at the biology of it, and biology. that's that the same endorphins and hormones and chemicals that are released in a, in a mother when she's nursing her baby, um, is the same chemicals that are released when the woman participates in any sexual activity. Mm-hmm. And she actually loses that, of that pheromone, and it's the same... Um, hormone that makes her connected with her baby. Like when you're nursing, the mother gets really connected with the baby and that same feeling she has when she's nursing her baby gets released when she's ha- involved in any sexual activity. And the more she releases that with somebody, the less she has and the more she loses it. That's why it's so important to only do it with one person because you'll lose that connection. You'll start losing yeah. the importance of it. So look at it uh, physically and biologically too. That's why men and women will break up and the men don't have that. So it's nothing to men. The men even forget. <laughs> it's just men the women. Don't care. <laughs> Honestly, and that's what's so weird is like, well, that's why God made women so unique and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's just like, so that's why when men and women break up, the man kind of like goes on with his life. But the woman is so broken hearted and it's the end of the world and well, stuff like that. Unless she a gold digger, but in that case. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> but that's why she's so heartbroken is because nine times out of ten, they have relations inside that relationship. And so she had that connection with him and now she lost it. So just like it's hard for a mother to um, disconnect with her baby, it's almost impossible. The woman now has to d- disconnect from that guy. And so we have to look at it biologically like that. And then outside of religion and outside of biology and stuff like that, think about it. If a man is not willing to prove that he loves you by putting a ring on your finger first and saying that he will stay with you forever, why would you give him your body forever? Girl, why'd you get a ring on your finger? That's not a my This is a, a rosary ring. <laughs> yes, because I'm married to God for right now. I should put this on my... I should put this on my... I'm married to Jesus. Purity ring. <laughs> anyway, nice. so it's so like, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so if a man is not willing to prove that he loves you and will put a ring on your finger and be with you for the rest of your life, then don't give him your body for the rest of your life. Don't give him that connection that only the husband deserves because, after all, he doesn't even love you because he's not willing to allow you to get married to him first and say, I will be with you and love you forever um, before you give your body to him. You know what I mean? Like, it just makes no sense that a guy isn't willing to wait on you because then that shows that he's only interested in yeah. one thing. So, yeah. LDR, he ain't worth it. Basically, <laughs> so basically, don't give your boyfriend husband privileges. That's what yeah. this boy's done to. So, yeah, these are some dotes in dating that a lot of people don't know, especially the passionate kissing and not spending the night at each other's house and not sleeping in the same bed overnight. That's just wrong on so many levels, and a lot of people don't know that. So, <laughs> I'm glad we're able to clear that up for you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we hope you enjoyed. Yes, make sure to check out the links that we have in, there, in the description and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. God bless you. We're praying for you and keep that fire burning. Bye!